Hi, my name is Chris Day from Everyday Sustainable Living and today we're going to talk about composting, in particular for Kashi. What is composting? Composting is the breakdown of organic matter, the decomposition of organic matter with fungi and microbes and bacteria acting upon these and breaking them down into humus like particles. Nice, what I call black gold or liquid gold compost for the soil and for the plants. Compost is basically the building block of soil fertility and for plant health and our health. So if we eat healthy plants, we are then in turn healthy. Fukashi is a composting method, slightly different than your traditional composting forms where you're aerobically breaking things down in, in piles or bins. A little bit different than worms because it's, it's actually a fermentation. Fukashi is a Japanese word meaning fermentation of organic matter, loosely translated, um, where you're using a bran which has been inoculated or has the addition of a culture, uh, effective microorganism culture, or otherwise uh, it's a lactobacillus, so it's a, it's a sort of it's a lacto culture, which ferments your food scraps. And it relies on what's called anaerobic breakdown, which is the breakdown without air. So just like fermenting your pickles, things like that, it's a form of pickling basically. So it's fermenting your food scraps. There's a few different ways we can do bakashi, but the, the thing that doesn't change is you need some sort of bran mix, which has been inoculated with the special microbes that help your food scraps ferment. You can get that from hardware stores, online, or you can even find info on, online and in your local area of how to make it yourself. The other key component is a bucket which is airtight. That's the main consideration, it needs to be airtight. So you can, you can buy a Bakashi bucket as shown here, or you can make your own Bakashi bucket with two buckets stacked on each other. And you drill holes in the bottom, a whole heap of small holes, about one or two millimetres wide with your drill, and you stack that on top. That needs to be a nice tight fit, and you could add a tap in there so you can drain off the liquid, or you can do that manually. The, the main thing is that it's airtight, and this lid is nice and tightly sealed on there. With your commercial Bakashi buckets, the lid seals really nicely. And to peel that off, inside there's a grate. So there's about the size of the holes if you're going to make them yourself. That grate sits on a little ledge in the bucket. So that allows any excess nutrient, uh, any excess nutrient and liquid to drain out of your food scraps into this little reservoir. And then you can drain that off regularly and utilise that, which we'll go into a bit later about how, but that's, that's where it drains out. So you can use that as a type of fertiliser. Now, there's a few key tri tricks. It's, I guess, in some ways, one of the simplest forms of composting. There's not a lot of detail with it, but the main thing is you do need this. When you start off, you need to add a layer of your Bakashi mix and then add your food scraps. So we're going to get another bag over here that's open. Different company, same thing. You can have a little measuring scoop or you can use your hand, it's up to you. But a bit like composting where we add a layer of carbon at the bottom to help absorb the moisture, adding a layer of the Bakashi brew at the bottom will also help soak up that moisture. So I've just put a few handfuls in there. Then we add our veggie scraps. In here, I've got lemons. Unlike worm farms, Bakashi is nondescript. It loves lemons, it loves small bones, it loves garlic, things like that. And then your general uh, food scraps like beans and trimmings and carrots and all that sort of stuff. Uh, it helps if you cut them up smaller. You don't have to, but it will break down quicker 
if you take that time, I use my secateurs for everything. Not everyone keeps their secateurs on their pouch, but I pretty much do everywhere. If you don't have a secateurs in your pouch, you can just quickly chop your veg up on the bench with a knife. So we chop them into nice small layers and we tip them in. Now, you'll notice that I've used a little compost caddy. So this sits on my bench. So I've got actually a series of these, one for bakashi, one for worms, one for composting, or one for chickens. So I've got lots of different options. Um, down the bottom of there, I've just got a small bit of paper which can also go into there. Ideally ripped up, so into smaller areas. But it doesn't need, you don't need to put the paper in there. It's quite happy with just the vegetables. The reason I fill this up first is because it's an anaerobic system, you want to minimise the amount you're opening the lid. So by filling that up first and just opening the lid once, we're keeping the airtight seal in there. We've added our stuff, we've added our vegetable scraps. Now I've just used an old wine bottle as my um, thing to mash it down with. You're not mashing it down hard, just doing that softly. What you're trying to do, because it's anaerobic, you're trying to get rid of the air gaps in there. Just going around and doing that. And then we're adding our mix. Now there's different schools of thoughts about how much, but really a couple of handfuls is fine. You want that to sort of cover the surface and inoculate the food scraps. One thing you can do, oh, and then you put your lid on. You make sure that's nicely sealed. Now there's a few tips and tricks that can help with this process and also help with the condensation on the lid. So before you put your lid in, you could get something like a, a large ice cream container or you could cut out another bucket lid or something like that and actually put that on top of your food scraps. What that does is because it's fermenting, it does condensate. So if you've got this, say, under your kitchen bench and you grab it out to get it out and all the water drips off, it's sort of not that enjoyable. Um, so having a lid on there Having a secondary lid on there that you can take off and put back on reduces the amount that's going to condensate. It also increases the air, the lack of air in there. Um, and then making sure seal that up nice and tight. Then basically over time you'll fill this up during the week. Once that's full, you'll repeat that process. You take it off, you add, add your kitchen scraps and then your bakashi mix. As you're filling up your bakashi bin, some of the moisture from your vegetable scraps will be draining through that grate and into the reservoir down below. Make sure you drain that off regularly. And then what you have there is a microbial brew, so a fermented brew. It'll smell a little bit like apple cider vinegar. Like I was saying, it is a fermentation process. So it's pickling, so vinegar is a, is a type of pickle or a, or a fermentation. Then you want to dilute that at least one to a hundred. So it's quite a strong acidic brew. So you don't definitely don't want to be pouring on your prized geraniums or, or roses or whatever. You want to dilute that one to a hundred. So that's, let's say, 10 mils to one litre or 100 mils to 10 litres. Um, so not very much, so very small amount. Dilute that in water and add that to your plants. Generally avoid your leaves and get it onto the soil. So that's stimulating the, the um, beneficial microbes that are coming out of here and then getting them into your soil. The other thing you can do with it is you can use it as a drain cleaner. So because your drains are all anaerobic, it actually introduces some beneficial anaerobic bacteria and microbes to break down those smells in your drain. So it works quite well as a drain cleaner and as a, as a digester of things in your drain. The other thing is if you're on septic, um, putting it down your drain, it then goes into your septic system and, and introduces beneficial microbes into your septic, which helps your septic system function better. So it has quite a, a range of uses if you don't put it on your garden, you can even just put it down your drain. And it's not going to harm anything, so that's good. The main thing is not using it straight on your plants and diluting it well. And making sure you drain this regularly. If you, if you let that water 
build up for a long time. It can build up in a bit of strong smell. So you want to try and do that weekly or so if you can. You can do it at the same time that you add your, your new um, ve vegetable scraps to your bin. Now there's, I guess the, the benefit of Bakashi is they, they work quite well in a, a small environment. So they can work really well in an office space where people don't necessarily sort all of their organics into things worms like and things compost like, etc. So it's sort of it's quite happy with a range of whatever you put in there. So quite well in an office environment. Also works quite well in small apartments and things like that that don't necessarily have access to a compost bin. But are still able to recycle your nutrients. Now, the, the main thing that is good to get across is that it's not actually composting your waste. It's not going to disappear in the bucket. It's pickling it. So it will look very similar to how it was when you put it in there. The difference being it's, it's, it's starting to pickle and digest in situ. So you'll notice when you open up your bucket that you might get a bit of a vinegary smell. That's good. You might also notice some white, sort of fuzzy moulds and things growing on there. That's also a good sign. If you do open it up and it's absolutely putrid, then that's a sign that either you might not be the lid might not be sealing well. It's also a sign that you might need to add a bit more Bakashi mix because there's not enough mix in there to help digest the system, or there might have been some other microbes that got in there with some really rotten something and that's taken over. So sometimes you're best to just start again and we'll deal with that a little bit later where how we actually what we actually do with this product once it's full. Once it is full, slowly slowly it's filling up, we've got a, a couple of options. We can dig a hole 20 to 30 centimeters deep, a little trench, put that in the trench and fill it in with your soil and then we leave that for approximately two to three weeks what will happen is the microbes in your soil will actually finish that breakdown of the fermented product and it's basically your bakashi has accelerated the fermentation has accelerated the kitchen scraps to a point where it will break down quite quickly once it gets into the soil if you don't have soil to put it in or if you want a, another way of dealing with it is actually putting it into a compost bin. Uh, so digging a hole in your, your existing compost, putting it in the middle, and then incorporating that through. It's just another addition to a compost that will um, break down quickly. You can, given it is quite acidic, you can add some dolomite lime to that to help increase the pH and reduce the smell a bit and make sure it's covered with some carbon carbonaceous material. The third way, I guess, if you are in an apartment and don't have access to soil, is trying to find a community garden or somebody who has got a garden which you can take your bucket to and, and give it to them to utilise. If you have two buckets, so let's say, and you've filled this bucket up and you have a second bucket, you can actually just put this away for a couple of weeks, let it ferment, drain off the liquid every week or so, and that'll basically sort of increase the fermentation in the bucket and then bury it. If you've only got one bucket and you want to continue, it's okay to put it in your soil straight away to continue your composting process. Once your Bakashi bin's full, dig a hole in your garden, about 20 to 30 centimetres deep, a bit of a trench. Imagine a full bucket's worth in there. And then we want to tip that into the hole. What will quite often happen is this will fall out as well, that's fine, we just put that back in our bin and we'll wash that bin before we start it again. Then what we're doing is just simply covering up our Bakashi mix with the soil and the decomposition process will finalise in the soil giving much needed nutrients and microbes to the plants around it. Now we don't want to plant into that straight away. It's, because it's quite acidic and it's fermented, plants aren't going to want that straight away. So we recommend waiting two to three weeks, let that fully decompose, fast forward back in, fast forward in time, two to three weeks, have a look, 
Yep, pretty much gone. Great, ready to plant into it. You can also, if you only have a small space like this, and to bury it, you can mine that compost out and put it in different spots of the garden. But I recommend generally, if you can just bury it and then plant into it, it's obviously easier. Now, some people have issues with things getting in there and digging it up, especially if you're putting bones and things like that in there that are quite interesting for a dog or a cat. So a simple method, similar to the compost bin, stopping the rodents getting in them, is we just get a piece of wire and a couple of bricks. And we just weight that down for a couple of weeks until that the nice smells and things have gone out of it and it's decomposted down and then we can remove those and plant into it. As you can see, Bakashi is as easy as one, two, three, four. Add your Bakashi mix, add your kitchen scraps, add your Bakashi mix, put your lid on, drain your liquid off, dilute that one to a hundred to use on your garden or your drains. Fill it up, let it ferment, bury it in the soil, and it continues to compost and enrich your soil once it's in your soil. You can make your own, or you can buy a readily pre-made commercial type of Bakashi. A great initiative by the City of Onkaparinga is providing subsidised subsidized Bakashi bins and the Bakashi mix, and that's to all City of Onkaparinga residents, so that's a fantastic initiative. The other thing, if you're not in that council area, you can quite often find these buckets secondhand uh, in op shops and from friends or family uh, who have tried it before and then moved on to a different type of composting. So hopefully you found this video interesting uh, and uh, makes you want to try Bakashi. If you'd like to find out more about more about Bakashi but also the other initiatives on composting, you'll see the links at the end of this video and you can also go to the City of Onkaparinga's website to find out more. Thanks very much for listening and I hope you really enjoy your Bakashi composting journey.